Welcome to IT Pro Guide YouTube channel and here Nias with you. In this video we're gonna discuss about how to migrate a VMware vCenter Windows version 6.0 to an appliance VCSA 6.7. Why it is recommended to upgrade a VMware vCenter Windows version from a Windows operating system to an appliance because VMware has depreciated the vCenter server for Windows with the release of vSphere 6.7. So it is time to prepare yourself to migrate or upgrade from Windows vCenter to a vCSA appliance. What is a VMware vCenter appliance and what you can achieve with a vCSA? The vCSA is a pre-configured virtual appliance built on Photon OS. The OS has been developed by VMware itself, so it benefits from enhanced performance over the previous Linux or Windows based appliances. The embedded vPostgres database gives VMware have full control of the software stack and it no longer needs to rely on any external databases which results in significant optimization for vSphere environment and a quicker release of security patches and bug fixes. Migration of vCSA will help you to enjoy the exclusive features of vCenter appliance like file-based backup, vCenter high availability. Choosing appliance also saves operating system license costs and make your life easier while deploy and patch. Migration of a vCSA VMware vCenter involves the deployment of a new appliance. Once you deployed a new appliance, it uses a temporary IP during the migration. Then using that temporary IP, it migrate all the configurations and the data from your Windows vCenter version to the appliance. Once the migration has completed, the Windows server is powered off and the vCSA is bought online with the same IP address and the fully qualified domain name. Before we go to the demonstration, I would like to talk about some considerations. Uh, Windows vCenter must be vCenter 6.0 or higher to migrate uh, to vCenter 6.7. The second one is EXSI host must be compatible with uh, vCSA 6.7 in my case or your target version. So if you have any EXSI host running below 6 or which is not compatible with your target version, then you need to consider an upgrade of EXSI host first before you go for a vCenter migration. Any database, internal or external, can be migrated to embedded vPostgres database. Update manager is now included in the vCSA, so you don't need to worry about that. No downtime required for virtual machines, so all the virtual machines will be running during the migration, but there is a downtime required for vCenter server. For the demonstration, we're gonna use Windows vCenter 6.0 running on a Windows operating system 2012 R2 and we are going to upgrade this vCenter version to vCenter 6.7. Both the vCenter is using an embedded vPostgres database. This demonstration is divided into three parts. The first is how to check the version of vCenter from the build number available in your vCenter then second, how to check the compatibility of your current vCenter with your target version. And finally, we will see how to migrate vCenter server from Windows version to a vCenter appliance. Open your current vCenter, then you can see vCenter version and a build number. The build number will help you to identify which update you are. The same you can see from about VMware vSphere. You can see the version is 6.0 and build number is 2656760. From VMware website, we can identify the vSphere update version with the build number. You can see it is VMware vCenter server 6.0.0a matches with 2656760 build number. So this is how you can identify which version you are using and which update you are using. 
now we know which vCenter version we have next we're gonna check the compatibility metrics you can see the 6.0.0 can be upgraded to 6.7 version once you completed uh, the pre-check required uh, to know the compatibility between your current and the target version the next step is to run a migration assistant from your current vCenter server using VCSA 6.7 ISO. A VCSA 6.7 you can download from VMware Visual website. A two months trial version is available. Once you complete the download, mount VCSA ISO, then run migration assistant. Use VSphere administrator credentials here. A universal C runtime is required to complete the migration assistant. So go to Microsoft Knowledge Base and download the required uh, package. Here my version is Windows Server 2012 R2. The Microsoft patch installation has completed. Now let us try to run the VMware migration assistant again. Now the migration assistant is running and it is waiting for migration to start. Let us go back to the VCSA ISO. Then go to UI installer, then double click on installer. Now click on migrate to migrate from an existing vCenter server. The first part in the migration is deploy an appliance. Accept the terms of license agreement. Enter the fully qualified domain name or IP address of your Windows Server. Then click Next. Accept the SSL Certificate Trust. Enter the EXSI host IP address to deploy the new vCenter appliance. And username and password for the EXSI host. So a vCenter appliance is going to be deployed on this ESSI host. Accept the certificate warning. Give a name for your vCenter appliance. Here I put vCenter 67. Then set up a root password. So your new vCenter server name will be vCenter 6.7 virtual machine name and the local credentials will be the password that you set up here. Then select the deployment size and storage size. Then click next. Select the data store. Then click next. Enter the IP address. Here you can see it is asking for a temporary IP address. And this IP address will be used in the initial stage to configure, to copy the configuration from the Windows vCenter appliance. Once the configuration has been copied, the vCenter appliance will use the same IP and fully qualified domain name and will shut down the Windows vCenter server. So this IP will be used only for a short time to complete the migration. Click Next. Then just review your settings and click Finish. Now the deployment of vCenter appliance has been started. At the same time, you can see some progress going on in the migration assistance that we run through a command prompt. Now stage one, deploy vCenter server has completed. Click continue. To move to the second stage, 
migration of vCenter from your Windows version to the new deployed appliance. Click Next to start migration of Source vCenter server windows to the appliance. Connect to the Source vCenter server. It uses the credentials that we applied earlier. A pre-migration checks are in progress. There are some warnings which is not a big deal. There are some warnings up here. The source vCenter server instance is configured with more CPU cost than the target appliance. And there is a resolution. If you need to increase uh, the number of CPU cost on the target vCenter server appliance, you can do that manually after upgrade or the migration issue. So that, so that we can deal after the migration. Next, enter the Active Directory administrator credentials so that uh, the appliance can be joined to Windows domain. Click Next. Validating Active Directory details. Next is to select migration data. Here you have three options. You can just select configuration alone. That is 2.78 GB estimated downtime is 37 minutes. Or you can select a configuration and historical data. Historical data includes events and tasks. So it he added a, like 100 MB uh, more than what I have in configuration. Or I can add configuration and historical data that includes events, tasks and performance metrics. So based upon your choice, you can select the migration data. For me, this is a demonstration purpose. Then join the customer improvement program if you need. Then click next. So here you're going to kick off the migration. So you can see there is a tick mark is required that uh, I have backed up the source vCenter server. So just make sure you have a backup copy of your source vCenter server in case something happened. Or you can revert back to your uh, Windows version of vCenter. And you can validate the IP address, the migration data size and everything. Click finish. The source vCenter will shut down once the network configuration is enabled on the destination vCenter server. So it's just uh, alerting you that this is what's going to happen. Click OK to continue. And the migration is being initiated. You can see the progress of uh, each step from here. This take usually some time. I just skip all the delays in between. So the vCenter migration has completed and it is giving some information based upon the version you will get some informations like this. So now the appliance is ready you can just click on the link showing there and then you can start using your uh, vCenter appliance vCenter server. Here I am just going to log in and see. So that is all about VMware vCenter Windows version migration to vCenter 6.7 appliance. Thanks for watching this video. For more videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel.